I'm pushing through it till I break that curse. Hello, Grand Prairie. Uh, this is Alyssa with GPLT uh, coming to you live on Facebook and YouTube um, for tonight's Poetry Cafe. Um, so as some of you may be aware, we're here every Thursday night uh, for GPLT's virtual variety nights. I just wanted to talk a little bit, first of all, about what they're about. Um, so we just were feeling hungry for a space to be creative, people to create with, permission to just try new things uh, and see what works for us, um, to develop more of a connection um, with each other uh, during these uh, times where it's a lot of distance and isolation. Um, and hopefully all of that can come come to a conclusion soon. Uh, and most importantly, we're here for fun. We want to uh, we want to be having lots of fun on Thursday nights here at 8 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook um, with GPLT Virtual Variety Nights. So tonight is the Poetry Cafe. So uh, the Poetry Cafe is where people sign up and um, then uh, they get a theme sent to them a couple hours ahead of time and then write a poem on that theme and then share their work um, when we go live. So this week I was the uh, poet who signed up. Um, and as it's just me, I've altered the theme a little bit. Uh, we're pretty flexible here. So um, I just wanted to put something together for you guys to all watch. Um, and I know that you don't just wanna hear me and my poetry the entire night. Um, so I've put together a couple of things that I'm excited about. Um, the next Poetry Cafe is slated for July the 15th. So if you are interested um, in poetry, um, then please email box.office at gplt.ca to sign up. Um, and then we're gonna try things a little bit differently. So we know that some people like more room to create and some people like me like the pressure um, that time constraints offer. So if you are somebody that likes to have a lot of um, time to think about it and revise, you are welcome to let us know in your email to sign up that you would like the theme immediately. Um, and we will send it to you right away. Um, if you are more like me and like the fun of the time constraint, then you can let us know that in your email as well, that you don't need it until the day of a couple hours ahead of time. Um, and we're also just going to expand a little bit about how you can participate. So if you are somebody who really likes uh, writing and likes poetry, but isn't all about um, uh, being on camera, um, to read your poetry or you don't like hearing your voice um, uh, speaking your words, then no problem. You just send us your poems um, with your permission to read them and we'll find somebody to read them for you. Because um, we do believe that your words are important and we would love to get them uh, out there. Um, so because I'm our sole poet tonight, I have kept with the general idea, but I have switched things up a bit. So I chose tonight's theme. Um, I gave it to myself, um, a couple of hours ago. And so the theme, uh, that I've picked because, uh, it is pride month. Pride is our theme today. So I've curated sort of a selection of stuff for you tonight. Um, there's something that I have written in the abbreviated kind of time we had, um, there is a poem that I found that's sort of on theme um, that I wrote many, many years ago. Um, and I have also managed to scare up some uh, poems written by others. Um, so tonight's uh, Poetry Cafe, I am going to start with one of the poetry greats uh, to see. I looked up uh, on Google 
uh, Pride and Shakespeare sonnets and came up with sonnet number 76. So um, I am going to recite uh, sonnet 76 by William Shakespeare for you first. Why is my verse so barren of new pride? So far from variation or quick change? Why with the time do I not glance aside to new found methods and to new compounds strange? Why write I still all one, ever the same, and keep invention in a noted weed that every word doth almost tell my name? showing their birth and where they did proceed. Oh no, sweet love, I always write of you. So all my best is dressing. Oh no, sweet love, I always write of you. And you and love are still my argument. So all my best is dressing old words new, spending again what is already spent. For as the sun is daily new and old, so is my love still telling what is told. Thank you, Shakespeare. Um, you went down in history for a reason. That was lovely. Um, so, uh, Again, we are always looking for new things here. We are excited because July has five weeks in the month. And so um, what our plan is, is to uh, uh, do a play reading um, in that fifth uh, Thursday in July of a new work. So if you have a work that you're interested in having um, uh, some in actors' mouths, um, then you have still some time to submit it. It doesn't have to be a final perfect draft. Um, it can be something that's a work in progress. Um, all of that is lovely. If you are a writer with a play that you would like um, some people to read, then we would love to hear from you. So uh, www.box. Uh, www.box.office at gplt.ca. Oh yeah, it's right there in front of you. Perfect. Um, and yeah, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. So next I'm going to read you a poem that I wrote a really long time ago. And there's a little bit of a story to go with this poem. Um, so when I was, I think in grade four, I wrote a poem about my own potential. I no longer, that poem no longer exists, but I remember a line in that poem was something, 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 face. I might even win the human race. Now, when I was in grade four, I thought that the human race was a foot race. That was kind of like the Olympic, you know, go to the Olympics, go to the human race, who's going to be the winner. And so I wrote that in my poem about my potential that maybe I could win the human race. Um, years later, like a couple years later, I found out that the human race just meant humankind. And I was mortified that I had ever written and committed to paper this mistake I had made that, um, I thought that it was a foot race because otherwise how could you win it? Blah, blah, blah. Then it, it, I was so embarrassed that I still remember to this day, the, that line, I may even win the human race that I wrote in this poem. But then a number of years passed by and I was thinking, I wish I had that poem because that line actually sounds kind of like unintentionally wise. Um, like, why are we competing with each other and trying to um, uh, be the biggest or the best or the most or whatever? And this idea of winning the human race um, I just started to kind of really like that as a metaphor. Um, but I didn't have the poem I originally wrote. And so I wrote another one called Winning the Human Face. And I will read that for you now. So I wrote this probably in, I would guess like 15 years ago or so. <clears throat> Let's see how it reads now. 
winning the human race. A baby girl, newly released from the womb, knows a great many secrets. Secrets that she will spend her life chasing. Like the rain chases the sun, like the sun chases the rain, like an epic game of chase each other through the kitchen, down the hall, across the living room, past the dining area, through the kitchen, all the time almost catching, all the time almost caught, all the time speeding away from the grubby grasp of secrets so that secrets can remain. A baby girl becomes a little kid. And when a little kid is six years old, chasing secrets catch her. Secrets say, once upon a time, and at the same time, every day, every runner on the planet would gather in a large playing field for the great human race. The track stretches just as wide as it does long, and there are no obstacles on the even playing field. The sun kisses the track with a dandelion glow, and the soil holds the warmth of the kiss. The air tastes of sweat and smiles and suspense and success and sounds like the ring of a held breath. The track is ready. Bring on the runners. One by one, the runners line up behind the starting line at one end of the field. A million faces, like a flower bed of diversity in the full bloom that excitement brings. One by one, the runners produce from their pockets a long and opaque piece of fabric. And they turn it to their left and they wrap their neighbor's eyes in it to eliminate the prejudice of their gaze. One by one, the runners reach out their hands, which are really their hearts, until they meet the hand hearts of the runners by their side. All by all, the runners take a deep collective breath that serves as the starting bell. The race will begin. With their hand hearts extended before them, the runners will run. Some are fast, some are slow, some are clumsy, some are graceful. All are listening closely to their invisible companions, listening with our souls, which are really their bones. The track is long, leaving much time to listen, to listen with their soul bones. The runners never stop running. At dusk, the first runner joins the finish line. The shadow on the sundial begins to spin. After two and two-fifths rotation, the last runner joins the first and the rest at the finish line. The sundial stops, marking the sun. Two and two-fifths rotation. The best time yet. Yesterday, it had been an even three. On the day the race began... 41 and a quarter. After a century blew by, two and two fifths rotation turned into zero. No change in the shadow from first finish to last. After the runners learned to listen, listen with their soul bones, they managed to reach, reach the finish line at exactly the same time. The day the runners completed the task, there was a great celebration. They had never, they had won the human race together. They would never race again. In the centuries that followed, the runners told their children the tale of the day the race was won. But the children forgot to pass the news along. And then there came a day when the runners forgot the tale. And soon after that, the runners forgot how to listen listen with their soul bones. And I cried when finally soul bones were forgotten altogether. And hands were just hands and hearts were reserved for one. And soul bones and hand hearts and the score of the final race weren't stories anymore. They weren't memories anymore. They weren't words on the tongue. They weren't ink in a book. 
They weren't facts. They weren't theories. They weren't ideals. They weren't truth. They were just secrets belonging to a baby girl and lost as soon as the milk was suckled from the breast. And there's that one. Um, yeah, so that was just one that I had written a long time ago, and I thought that it sort of fit today's theme. Um, and as you may have been able to tell by my little intro being, uh, to that poem being a story, I'm really uh, a fan of storytelling. It's one of my greatest passions. And here at GPLT Virtual Variety Nights, we do have a story circle um, that we do on the first Thursday of each month. So the next one is July 1st, which is Canada Day. So the theme is Canada. Um, so if you have a story about Canada or if you just want to create one, um, we would really love to hear from you. You can submit the story in a couple of different ways. So if you want to come on here just like me, um, all you really need is an internet connection and some time on a Thursday evening. Um, and all, and then just email box.office at gplt.ca and um, we'll give you all of the details. Um, you can also, though, if you're busy on Canada Day and you'd really like to participate, but you aren't able to make it at that time, um, we are also able to help you um, submit your story. You can uh, take a video of yourself, submit that. We would need those in about a week early, so by June the 24th. Um, so just let us know if you're interested in doing that. Even if you don't know how, we'll help you figure that out. Um, and then the other way is if you just have one written and again, you're just somebody that doesn't want to be on the, on the camera, that's not um, of interest to you. No problem. Um, I would be really happy to find somebody um, to read your story for you so that we can get those words out there. So again, uh, the theme is Canada and you just email uh, the box office and it's July 1st that uh, we have our next story circle. So I'll look forward to seeing you there. So when I realized that I was going to be the only poet for tonight and that I was going to have to um, uh, create a little bit of a program and it couldn't just be my poem because when I don't have that much time to write, I do write long poems, as you can see, uh, on occasion, uh, but I can't fill up all the time with just my words. <clears throat> um, I was... Uh, stressing about it and um was talking to one of my friends and said oh my gosh I don't know what I'm gonna do I'll have to just put something together uh because it is important to me to uh to be consistent to be here for you and for me on Thursdays um and keep this thing going so um she uh said well I have no interest in um, telling a poem. Um, I'm not really a poet, but why don't I just take this as a challenge and I'll write one. You tell me the theme, I'll write you a poem. And she did it. Uh, lickety split, sent it to me. And um, so I'm going to read her work. Pride. As they say, cookies make the world a better place. So here we go. P is for preheat the oven to 350 and line a baking sheet with your favorite parchment, any color you prefer, but hopefully paper. R, reconstitute butter, eggs, sugar, vanilla, salt, baking soda, lots of love, and of course, chocolate chips. I, Ingeniously divide the dough in seven parts and color each with a color of the rainbow. Same as in life, mix them all together to make one bright, big strand cut into beautiful individuals and place on above mentioned parchment. D, don't forget to check the timer. They are sure to be done in nine minutes. E, enjoy and share with everybody. So that is a very lovely poem from a very lovely friend. Um, 
who really came through for me today. That was lovely. Um, so another event that we have coming up is on July the 8th. Um, we're doing Last Maniac Standing. So that is our theater sports improv uh, competition. Um, you just email box.office at gplt.ca if you would like to participate. Um, basically, you just let us know you want to be involved and we will uh, get back to you um, to let you know kind of what to expect. We are hoping that we can kind of build a bit of a repertory company um, of regulars that'll just keep coming back, get to know the games a little bit. Um, so that it's less explaining games and more just having fun and playing once a month um, and, and honing our, our improv chops. So I've been having a lot of fun at our improv nights, and I bet you will too if that's something that you enjoy. Um, please get in touch. Now, again, I have a space for you. If you hate being on camera, but you're like, oh, improv's fun and I like being part of something, um, I know that last week when I was trying, to, or last month when I was trying to host and score keep, it was really, really difficult for me. Um, so if you even just want to be back, uh, you know, behind the scenes, keeping score, um, tallying the points and helping me out that way, I could really use a volunteer for that. So again, box.office at gplt.ca or reach out to us on Facebook. Um, you're also welcome to message me, Alyssa Hudson, if you can find me on Facebook. I'd be uh, really happy to hear from you. Okay, so then I get off work and I come home and I'm trying to sort out what we're going to show. And I have a seven-year-old daughter. And my seven-year-old uh, loves coming up with poems just off the top of her head. She likes a lot of spoken word style uh, stuff. And she just likes to riff on a topic for a while. So I told her my topic of pride today. Um, and uh, it's after her bedtime now. But she made a little video for you to enjoy um, on her riffing on pride. So take it away, Tilly. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I am as prideful as a lion. I am as proud as a beaver, even though it may seem that none may retrieve her. I have retrieved her um, not long, long ago. So stop your chit-chatting. I mean, stop your chit-chatting. Let's put on a show. Whoa, oh, whoa. Um, no matter how much pride I have, my mother's name is Alyssa Bam Bav. I have seen so much to go, so much to do. Ooh, ooh. Um, mm, Bibbidi bobbidi bibbidi boo. When I was started, I had not farted in the middle of my seat. But when I was done, I pulled out a dub and said, Dickily dickily dumb. <laughs> so. When I decided to go through the middle, and then I realized I had finished it. So if you're really wondering, you should ask me. So the will be cleared up because I am prideful and so are you. Thank you, Tilly. Um, so Tilly um, last summer attended one of the GPLT Rising Stars um, drama camps, and she is going to be returning again this year. She had so much fun last year. Um, if you have a budding young thespian, there are still spots available. You can register at gpltrisingstars.com 
or follow them on Facebook or Instagram at GPLT Rising Stars um, for more information. Uh, just reach out if you have any questions. Um, because yeah, it's a really great camp for kids going on this summer. They do, um, have, uh, a policy in place to make sure that everyone's keeping safe distance and that kind of stuff, but it is going to be in person, uh, classes. Um, and they have kind of a different theme going each week. Um, and it'll be really fun. So check them out. Okay, so another thing I did to try and create some content for this evening was I reached out uh, to my friends on Facebook and I just said, hey, um, can everybody just give me a line or two about pride? I'll compile them and make a poll. Uh, one of the responses I got for my friend, uh, Stuart Lowen, who I met when I was in my first GPLT show uh, in 2016 uh, called The Dining Room. Um, yeah, he responded to me and the uh, lines that he sent, I was like, that's kind of a poem all on its own. Can I just, you know, um, present it as that? And he said, yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is Stuart Lowen's poem called Pride. <clears throat> Pride by Stuart Lowen. The evolution of liberty in love and acceptance. The idea that people who are different from a previously mandated program no longer have to be afraid. They can feel free and open and have the rights and liberties to exist and express themselves with others in their new pride and for a new family when needed. So thank you very much, Stuart. That was um, perfect. It was lovely. Um, so next up, uh, is next week, June 24th, um, for a virtual variety night. So what we had slated was our singer songwriter evening. We had, uh, tons of really wonderful songs, um, presented over the last two months. And this, uh, month we're opening it up with this theme of emergence, um, and we wanted to just give people a little more time to get their songs in. So we are postponing that for a while. So if you, um, were interested in that, but today is the deadline, uh, was the deadline. So if you were nervous, cause you're like, I just can't get it together by then. Don't worry about it. Um, you still have some time left, uh, cause on June 24th, we are going to be doing, uh, something else instead. Um, I am really excited about what we have kind of in the works, uh, but it's not set in stone yet. So I don't want to um, mislead you in any way, uh, but just stay tuned to our Facebook page um, or keep in touch with the box office and um, join us on Thursday um, for, yeah, something really exciting that, uh, that we have in store for you. Um, as far as the singer songwriter, just email the box office for all of the details about what exactly they need from you. Basically, if you can video or do a recording, an audio or a video recording of your song, that's usually the easiest way because uh, then we don't have to worry too much about streaming speeds, which kind of gets in the way of music more often than uh, with things like this. Um, great. So, uh, I put posted on Facebook that I wanted to hear my friends tell me about pride. And then I took what they said and I created a poem from it. So what I'm going to do first is just read the comments that I got until I had to, um, get working on the poem. Uh, so if, if you are my friend and you posted after the last one that I said that I'm, uh, I will try and work you into the poem eventually, <laughs> Um, for prosperity's sake, but uh, I don't have it done yet. So <clears throat> uh, these were some of the comments that I got. <clears throat> Pride is watching my two children become creators and explorers who have a strong sense of self. Pride is celebrating all love and goodness in the world. Pride is the ability to be true to yourself. 
Pride is being able to live authentically and without fear of being harmed or ostracized from someone knowing who you really are. Pride is being a mother to a couple rad kids, a supporter of family and pals who express themselves authentically no matter how, and knowing I have so many beautiful people in my life. I am not even trying to be a smartass. The first thing I thought of was a group of lions. Pride is being proud of who I am, my successes, and the same of my children, friends, family, and the others I meet on my journey. Pride is being grateful for those pioneers who fought for human rights so we can feel safe today. It is also a responsibility to keep the fight going. Pride is acknowledging your own worth, your own successes, and seeing yourself and others benefit from it. Pride is success in my career and also being a person loved ones call when they're in need. Be loud, be proud, be you. That's kind of my motto. It applies to lots of different situations. Pride is seeing my children succeed with overcoming struggles. Pride is acceptance, warmth, and love. If you think pride is about nationality, then you're wrong. And then the rest of the you're wrong song by no FX. Okay, so those are the comments. So as you can see, pride means um, a lot to different people. Um, and it was lovely to hear what they thought about it. So then to kind of fit with the um, format of coming up with a poem in a short amount of time, I took their words um, and I rearranged them and um, I created this poem. I asked my friends what pride is, and I was glad I did. They had a delightful variety of insights to impart. Allow me to sum them up for you in hopes you'll understand why I am so proud that such diverse, wise, open hearts are standing in my corner. If you think pride is about nationality, you're wrong and then the rest of the no FX, you're wrong song. Pride may not be a verb, but sometimes seems verb-like. Pride is watching, celebrating, being, and being again, being able, being a mother, being proud, being grateful, being a person that loved ones call. Pride is seeing and acknowledging. Pride is a noun too. Pride is success. Pride is the ability. Pride is also a responsibility. Pride is a group of lions. The first thing I thought of, I'm not even trying to be a smart ass. Pride is acceptance, warmth, and love. My friends are smart. Be loud, be proud, be you. That's kind of my motto. It applies to lots of different situations. My friends are proud of beautiful things, proud of their children, their rad kids that are unfolding to become creators and explorers, proud of themselves for being themselves, true to themselves and their worth, proud of the pioneers who fought for us to feel safe today, proud of the ways they keep fighting for people to feel safe tomorrow, proud of all who are brave enough to be authentically themselves without fear of people knowing who you are and what you stand for. I am proud to stand for the beautiful people in my life, my family and my friends and others I meet on this journey. So thank you very much to um, all my friends on Facebook who commented uh, to loan me your words. I really appreciated it. Um, and I think we created something really cool. Um, so that almost wraps us up. I just also, um, because it was Pride Month, 
uh, when I was taking a video of Matilda's stream of consciousness at one point or after that video, I did also ask her um, to just tell me about Pride Month. So here is her response uh, to that. Can you tell me about Pride Month? Okay, so you heard about Pride Month or Pride Week or whatever. Um, well, like, if you have any, if I have any on them days, and somebody in my family said, I could marry a woman, well, I would say, yeah, I would say, that's your problem if you don't want me to marry a woman, not mine, okay? So, later! So, uh, you heard it there first, or at least first uh, that you've heard in that way, uh, very emphatically um, <laughs> uh, stated, uh, it will be your problem and not her problem. Um, so thank you all very much uh, for joining me today. Um, thank you very much to Andrew, uh, our tech, who is here with us every Thursday, um, putting in the hours so that we can um, have uh, a lovely uh, event. Um, he really goes above and beyond um, to, uh, to help us out. And then also thank you to Jory Kinjo for Break That Curse, the song that you heard at the intro to our event today. Um, uh, thanks a lot, Jory, for letting us use your music. We really appreciate it. Um, in general, we do um, a draw. We just started it last week. Um, for anybody who has commented um, on our stream, they can then be entered into the draw. Today we've had one comment by Charity Frost. So Charity, you are the automatic winner today. So if you contact the box office, there will be comp tickets uh, available for you for a show this upcoming season. Um, the season is set to be announced soon. So I know a lot of people have been really um, eager to find out what's in store um, this coming season. Uh, our season selection committee has been hard at work um, and um, we've been uh, kind of holding our breath to see what's going to be allowed and, and all that kind of stuff. So we are very excited um, to bring that to you shortly. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today uh, for the Poetry Cafe at GPLT's Virtual Variety Nights. We will see you here next week for our special surprise on June the 24th. And then uh, the Story Slam on July the 1st, um, in the last Maniac Standing Improv Challenge on July the 8th, and our next Poetry Cafe on July the 15th. So we will see you then. Thanks so much. Ciao.